Hey guys, welcome back to Fantasy Tipped. Julian here for another Waiver Wire episode. This one for the part one of week 26. You've made it, guys. If you are still playing this week, it's because you're playing for the trophy for your fantasy hockey final, or at the very least, you're playing for the bronze medal. This is a big week. A lot of you guys are already finished. Your fantasy hockey seasons last week was the very, very last week of your season. Hopefully, you managed to take it home and you're coming here just to, you know, show your support and hopefully I was able to help you. But for those of you that are still playing, this is going to be my second to last waiver wire video of the season. I can't believe we are already here, guys. And thanks to all of you guys for watching and supporting me all year long. I really, really do appreciate it, guys. I definitely will be back next year. I'll be coming back at the beginning of August with as much preseason content as I did this year, trying to put out three to four videos a week once again, guys. So I am not going anywhere. Don't you worry. So before I start this video, if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, if I helped you out at all this year, please consider hitting that subscribe button and drop a like on this video if you haven't already. Thanks so much, guys. Let's jump into the schedule for week 26. Now, for most of you guys, not all of you guys, week 26 is broken down into two parts. So go ahead and check to see if your week 26 is one week or both weeks long. The easiest way to do that is when you auto set your lineup, it'll set your lineup for the whole week, right? When you can do that on Yahoo. And if it sets your lineup for more than seven days, that means that your week is not just the week, it is the two week long final. In this week specifically though, we're gonna be focusing on part one of the week. And on Monday, there are two games, Tuesday 13, Wednesday three, Thursday 10, Friday five, Saturday 13, and Sunday Four. So as usual, off nights are Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday, and those busy nights are pretty busy. So actually prioritizing off night players is a really good idea this week. And the team with the best schedule is the Las Vegas Golden Knights. They play all four off nights, so Vegas players are going to be very, very valuable this week. And the Coyotes, Chicago Blackhawks, and St. Louis Blues will also be pretty valuable because they play on three off nights. All three of them play Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday, but Arizona also has a fourth game on Tuesday. And the next best schedule is the Calgary Flames, who play four games and then play the off nights Friday and Sunday. So there's only one team that has kind of a bad schedule this week, and that's the Boston Bruins, because they're the only team that plays less than three games. They play Tuesday and Saturday on the two busiest nights of the week, making their value even lower. Jumping into some forward options, Owen Tippett, someone I've had on this list for a few weeks now. He's someone who gets great deployment, top six minutes, top power play time, likes to shoot the puck. Definitely someone I don't mind adding to my lineup. Brian Rust has been on this list for how many weeks now? He's absolutely exploding, playing on the top line and top power play, and absolutely deserves to be rostered. The Penguins only played three games, and one of them is on Monday, though, so it's an off-night game. But if you can roster him all three nights, definitely, definitely consider adding Brian Rust to your team. William Carlson's an excellent add for the off-nights, since Vegas does play on all four off-nights. He's pretty much for sure fitting into your lineup, so that's an awesome, awesome add if you can afford to add him. Gustav Nyquist of the Nashville Predators. I don't know why he's still only 52% rostered. The dude's playing top line and top power play with Philip Forsberg, and he's absolutely going off right now. He's definitely someone who's a pretty solid add. Dylan Strom continues to get top six time in Washington and top power play time, and as long as he's hot, he's a good add as well. Ivan Barbashev of the Vegas Golden Knights, who's playing top line with Jack Eichel, as well as top power play with Eichel. It is a great deployment that he has right now, and with Vegas having all four off nights and him being decently hot right now is the perfect time to be adding Ivan Barbashev to your team. Nick Schmaltz of the Arizona Coyotes is also insanely hot right now. The Coyotes have off nights. He's someone that I like a lot, and he's playing top line and top power play minutes with Clayton Keller. Definitely, definitely a good add there. JJ Paterka is insanely hot right now, playing in the top six in Buffalo, as well as a top power play. The dude is really, really good right now. Definitely a good add if you can actually fit him in your lineup on those busy nights. Adam Henrique 
The Oilers have a decent schedule this week, and they have an even better schedule in the second half of the week, being the only team that plays three times. Henrik makes for a really, really good ad, especially if he played both halves of the week. Tyler Bertuzzi is still playing on the top line with Austin Matthews and Max Domi. When Marner comes back, I'm expecting Domi to be demoted, not Bertuzzi, so Bertuzzi could still have a lot of value when Marner gets back definitely someone as long as he's hot and scoring goals deserves to be on your team if he starts slowing down drop him quickly then we got Channy stevenson of the vegas golden knights 23 percent rostered playing on the second line with amadio and cotter obviously not the best second line you could probably consider that the third line if i'm being perfectly honest with you but he is getting top power play time for the most part and is playing on those off nights which makes him a pretty decent ad you're right slavkovs he's playing top line and top power play in montreal and despite him still not having right wing eligibility the dude is performing pretty well right now at pretty much a point per game definitely a solid ad if you do somehow have room on those busy nights Mikael Granlund's a good ad as well the dude is putting a point per game up on the Sharks which isn't bad at all he's definitely their best player right now and we have Nick Bukestad and Logan Cooley playing on the top line and second line center spots respectively both are doing really really well right now and with the Coyotes having the off nights that they do they're both excellent ads. Then we got Philip Kurushev playing on the right wing with Connor Bedard, and right now it's Jason Dickinson. And the dude's putting up pretty much a point per game. And if you're in a deep league, he's a good ad right now, especially for those off nights that Chicago has this week. Then Anthony Mantha's doing incredibly well on that line with William Carlson and Pavel Dorofiev, who I also have on this list if you look a few spots lower. Those guys, Mantha and Dorofiev, are both excellent ads if you're in a deep league and you need somebody for those off nights because you're pretty full on the busy nights. Both really, really good ads. Mantha, definitely a better ad than Dorofiev, but if you're in a super deep league, they're both viable. William Eklund doesn't have the off nights this week, but is putting up a lot of points and is playing on the top line and top power play in San Jose. Brandon Saad is playing on the top line with Robert Thomas in St. Louis, and he has been scoring a lot of goals. And as long as you're playing with Robert Thomas, you got value, and he's playing on the off nights. So definitely not a bad ad if you're in a deep league. Jumping into defensemen, Zach Wierenski has been very, very good and is somebody that you need to be having on your team for some offensive production. Noah Hannafin I have there for the off nights. If you don't have room for somebody on the busy nights even adding a defenseman for the off nights is solid because Hannafin gives a pretty safe floor night in and night out and getting four games out of Hannafin is definitely not a bad thing Sean Jersey's also for the off nights he is playing on the top power play in Arizona and even though he hasn't been that amazing this year as of late his peripherals and floor have been pretty good and he definitely could put up some offense for you and Justin Falk Seems to have slowed down a little bit, but the peripherals are still decent and he could still put up some points and he gets the off nights as well. Jeremy Lozon of the Nashville Predators is back and is trying to beat the NHL hits record in a season. The dude is hitting like crazy. And if you need hits, Jeremy Lozon is a fantastic ad. Definitely, definitely could actually beat the NHL hits record of all time. Braden McNabb's a solid ad for the offense as well. Don't expect too many points from him, but the peripherals are pretty decent. Caden Gooley of the Montreal Canadiens, if you do have room on the busy nights for a defenseman, he's doing pretty decently lately, putting up points and also some decent peripherals. He's known mostly for the block shots. Simon Benoit is known mostly for hits, puts up a pretty decent amount of hits night in and night out, and that's pretty much the expectation that you can have from him. And then Nikola Haig of the Vegas Golden Knights is a good option for deep, deep leagues where you're looking for someone to fill in for the off nights. Nikola Haig should put up some decent peripherals and potentially a point or two over the four games. And finally, if you're in a super deep league and you're looking for offensive production, Zellweger just came off a three assist game for Anaheim, getting plenty of top power play time. He's an up and coming guy. I would take the shot on him if you do need some offensive production and you're in a super, super deep league. Jumping into goalies, and like I did last week, guys, I have numbers next to each one of these goalies detailing exactly how many starts I am expecting from each goalie. So first we have Logan Thompson of the Vegas Golden Knights, and he's definitely a higher uh, percentage roster than I usually include in these lists, but he's the only goalie on this list that I'm expecting to start four games this week. As long as Hill doesn't come back from his injury, 
Thompson could get all four starts since there is no back-to-back -back sets for Vegas and they're playing on all four off nights. Thompson is a very, very, very good goalie to be having this week. So if you're in a super shallow league and he's available, definitely worth adding. Uko Pekalukunen, with Levi being set back down to the AHL, Lukunen is back to being for sure the starter and should get all three Buffalo games this week. Then I have Philip Gustafson, and Minnesota plays Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday this week, and I'm expecting him to get the Tuesday start and at least one of the back-to-back -back games as well. Charlie Lindgren is going to get three starts for the three busy nights that Washington plays this week. Peter Kachetkov should get Tuesday against Boston and Sunday versus Chicago with the current way that they alternate their goalies. After that, though, I would drop him even if you are playing the second half of the week because Carolina only plays one game, and that's probably going to go to Frederick Anderson. And Jonas Corposalo is playing really well right now for Ottawa, and as long as he's hot, he's going to keep getting all the starts for Ottawa and should get all three starts on the busy nights this week. Then Seattle plays four games this week, so two of them should go to Decord and two of them should go to Grubauer since they seem to be splitting pretty evenly. Both are playing decently. I'm not expecting too much from either of them, but two starts each seems like it's going to happen. Ingram and Vamilka also should get two starts each. Again, Arizona plays four nights this week and three of them are on off nights, so these guys should both get two starts alternating. Alex Lyon should get two to three starts for Detroit. He could potentially get all three if he keeps playing well. Detroit is really pushing for the playoffs, so they will ride the hotter goalie. Jake Allen could get all three games if he bounces back in his next game, which I haven't seen yet this week because, well, he didn't do so well in his last start. But if he does play well, he could get all three games for New Jersey since they're also pushing for a playoff spot. Then Peter Morozik of the Chicago Blackhawks has been fantastic all year, but for some reason they keep giving random games to Soderblom, which is why he may not get all three games on the three off nights this week, but could at least get two of them. And Montembeau plays on average two out of every three games, so you can expect him to get two out of Montreal's three games on the three busy nights. Next is my man skate must add player of the video, Calvin Pickard. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code word FANTASYTIPPED at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com with the code word FANTASYTIPPED. Nothing like a little spring cleaning in your pants. Now why is Calvin Pickard my Manscaped must add player of the video? Well, while he only is probably going to get one start this week, and that's probably on the off night against Arizona, which is already great, in part two of the week, he is somebody that could get another two starts. He could get San Jose on Monday, since why not rest Skinner against San Jose only a few days before the playoffs, and then they have a back-to-back -back set on Wednesday and Thursday, so he should get one of Arizona or Colorado in order to you know help rest Skinner for playoffs as well. Obviously, Skinner's not going to start two games back-to-back, -back, so... He could really be a league winner if you're in a points-based league. Maybe not so much a categories league, but if you're in a points-based league where you get points for you know saves and wins, Calvin Pickard really could be a sneaky ad. Now, I wouldn't be adding him be too much before that Friday game against Arizona because you know he's just going to be sitting on your bench doing nothing. But maybe on Thursday or Friday morning, if you have same-day ads, that would be a good time to add Calvin Pickard because I'm expecting him to be a pretty good ad for the end of the season. Then we have Alex Nedeljkovic of the Pittsburgh Penguins, and Pittsburgh is trying hard to make the playoffs. If Ned keeps playing well, they're gonna keep riding him, and he could potentially get all three games this week if he keeps playing well. Pittsburgh is really pushing right now to make the playoffs. Crazy to say that, because I had ruled them out weeks ago, but with everybody in the playoff picture kind of playing badly, they actually have a legitimate chance of making it and they're going to keep riding Alex Nagelkovic until they either make it or he starts choking and they go back to Jari. Then I have Lucas Dostal, who I'm expecting to get one to two starts, and he has been better than Gibson, so he should at least get one half of the back-to-back -back this week, but he should also get the game on Tuesday for Anaheim. So I think he'll get two starts this week. Then Mackenzie Blackwood should get all three San Jose starts this week on the busy nights. Then Daniel Tarasov, and with the current goal, the alternation, he should get the Tuesday game and the Saturday game this week against Tampa Bay and Nashville. And he has been sneakily really, really good. So definitely someone you could be adding in deeper leagues here. And finally, Ivan Fedotov. And 
I included him here. I don't know how many games he's going to get. It really depends how he does. In his first game, he looks pretty freaking good, allowing only one goal in relief of Samuel Urson. And if he continues to play well, he could get all three games for Philadelphia this week. It really depends how he looks the week that I'm recording this. If he looks good and he continues to play well, he could see all three starts for Philly. Realistically, you can expect one or two. But hey, if he plays well, could get all three. And he is available in 96% of leagues. Definitely a risk, but one that might pay off. And that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. And thanks so much for watching and supporting this channel all year long. I really do appreciate all of you guys that watch all year. And uh, I'll definitely be back next year and next week for the second half of the waiver Wire episode. But I really do want to express uh, how thankful I am for all of you guys that watch me. Thanks so much, guys, and I'll catch you in the next episode of Fantasy Tipped.